Hey everybody, today is about creating a fine art piece using a still life photo in Photoshop and using one of my favorite plugins. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to uh, expanding your horizon and creatively thinking out of the box in photography and as a photo artist. With that out of the way, let's jump into our program and that is using Photoshop, uh, I'm going to walk through and create a fine art piece using a still life image. Let's get started. All right, jumping in here in Photoshop, I'm just going to double click on my workspace here and that allows me to get the open dialog box. And this is the image I'm going to work with. And let me just reduce the size of that. Now with this uh, image, I'm not really happy with the background that was used. And so I'm gonna change that. And by the way, everything I'm gonna do here is very subjective. It's based on my vision, what I'd like to produce which means it may not be what you want to produce, but um, hopefully you'll pick up some concepts and ideas here today. But the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to make this a square uh, piece of artwork. So I'm going to grab my crop tool, which is right here in the toolbar for the new people, if you're new to Photoshop, right here. And uh, it is already set to a one by one uh, aspect ratio square because I did this uh, a project about two weeks ago. So I, it's been a while since I jumped into Photoshop. But with that selected, I'm just gonna resize this a little bit, move this over here. And I'm just gonna say, okay, that's gonna be my um, fine art piece right there. So let's, well, let's push this down just a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to accept that. So I'll click on the check mark there to accept that crop. Okay, so that was number one, we adjusted that. I'm gonna duplicate the layer with Control J or Command J on a Mac. That way I will have a before and after uh, look at uh, my project. And uh, let's start out by selecting uh, the flowers. So what I'm gonna do here is choose this tool on our toolbox, and that, or toolbar I should say, and that's the object selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag over this area and let Photoshop find that uh, grouping of flowers. There we go. And with that done, I'm going to add a mask right here. So down here in layers, let's add a mask. And remember that in the mask, white reveals and black is actually concealing. So if I hide the background layer right here, you can see that there is my selected uh, flowers. So what I'd like to do is, we'll put that back there. I'm going to go to a category I have in my libraries, which saves me some time. Um, I did a past video on how to uh, configure and customize your, your library panel in Photoshop. And I'm gonna go to an area called overlays or a category that I have called overlays. I'm gonna choose this texture right here. And I'm just gonna click and drag on top of the image. And um, notice where I place this. Let me just expand this. Holding the shift key down so I expand it out. So I place that below this layer here. So this now becomes my new background. Instead of that background, I have this background instead. I'm gonna duplicate that with Control J, Command J on a Mac. And again, uh, you know, no right or wrong in this to start playing with this. Uh, let's take a look at multiply. I'm going down some blending modes here. Soft light, overlay. Um, boy, I don't know which one I want. Let's go with, I can always change it. So I'm gonna go with overlay right there to start with. Now with that done, what I like to do is uh, with the still life, so I'm gonna select this image here and I'm gonna come down to the, um, button here that uh, I call special effects because the shortcut button is effects. So I'm gonna add that to the layer. And what I'm gonna do is come down to the drop shadow category in that drop down menu. And 
I'll share a little tip with you. Uh, obviously, here in the dialog box, we have opacity. So you can see how my shadow could get darker. Um, I could fade it back a little bit. Also, the, the distance I can play with is spread and size. So if I do this, there's a hard shadow. And this is just spreading that out a little bit. And I like that right there. But if I want to reposition my shadow, here's a little a tip. If you move the cursor away from the dialog box, and you can actually click down on the shadow and move the shadow wherever you would like it be to be positioned rather than using the distance slider over here. I just find that it's easier to maneuver that way. And I'm going to leave that right there. And again, this is all personal preference, very subjective. And I'm going to click on OK. Now, with that done, I'm going to convert this to a um, black and white image. But I think before I do that, uh, I'm going to add another texture here. And um, again, I'm going to pull this, whoops, pull this down to stretch it out. I'm just holding the shift key down to resize that. Enter on the keyboard. And uh, the blending mode on this, I don't like. How about overlay, soft light? I like overlay. I'm going to go with overlay. So that adds, um, you know, building up some more texture. It almost has a vignette look to it. And I do want the texture to be on uh, the flowers just to make it a little gritty looking. And, and again, this is personal preference. Now, with that selected, I'm going to go to the very top. And I'm going to choose with the Oreo cookie dipped in milk icon here in layers, I'm going to choose black and white because I do want this to be a black and white uh, image. Now, what's nice about this is over here in properties on the right side, I can play with the yellows because the flowers were yellow. So notice that as I move this, I can punch up to my liking the flowers. I like it like about right there. The reds, if I slide the reds around, that affects the flowers a bit. So uh, again, just sort of fine tuning this. The greens, let's see what we got here, just moving the slide around. So again, it's all based on personal preference, very subjective on how you want this to look. And I don't think there's any cyans in there. Nope. And any blues? No. And I don't think, again, there's no magentas at all. But again, uh, this uh, black and white layer helps me fine tune the look of the flowers. And uh, by just moving the sliders around, the reds, the yellows, and the greens have some big impact there. Okay, so um, right now I like that. And I'm going to continue on finishing this up uh, by pulling it into a plugin that I, I've had for a few years. I actually had the beta version of it before it uh, came out a few years ago. And it is called Boris FX. It is called uh, Optics. And before I can apply that to this project, I need to consolidate everything down on a single layer. So that means I need a stamp visible layer. So shift control alt E on my keyboard will give me that if you're on a Mac. It should be shift command option E like an Edward. And again, that consolidates everything here at the very top because it's at the very top stack. And uh, so now I can work on this. Now I'm going to open up optics. I just had created a shortcut to open up the um, the plugin. And the plugin remembers the last time I used it, so I'm just saying no on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to a category called, and you can see all these different categories, by the way. Um, there's color, um, light. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go to light here, and I'm going to come down to this category. And you can see what it does, how it puts like an overlay like uh, from a window. Um, there's all these abstract uh, things, if I'm not mistaken, over here, all built in. Let me move to the top, let that load. And there's a lot of stuff to pick from in here. Well, something like this. I like that. Or that. Ooh, either one <laughs> is pretty good. Um, no, I don't like the pattern so strong like that. But you got the idea that there's a bunch of these things in here that you could use as overlays uh, with light, and you can adjust the intensity of this uh, if you wish. Uh, the brightness here is 75. I might want to push that down just a little bit. 
So you can see here in the parameters panel, this is all, again, very subjective, but I'm gonna leave that right there. And then I'm gonna go to a category called Film Labs, and I'm gonna go to Film Stock right here. And you can see that th it's trying to simulate all these different types of films out there. And uh, let's choose like that or that. Um, no, I like that. It's very contrasty. So again, they have all these uh, built-in presets on film stocks uh, down to that one versus that one. Um, I like that one better. So again, I'm just shooting from the hip here to sort of get a look of a fine art piece. And then I'm going to add a new layer to this. So there's a set of layers here. And again, this is not a training class uh, or session on um, Boris Effects op optics, but it's just to show you uh, some of the cool things are in there that I can use on a fine art piece. And then with that done, I'm going to do a search because I can't remember where it's at. And it's just called Borders. Click on that category and you've got all these different preset borders that you can use. So if I choose that one, you can see it changed that one, that one right there. Uh, and again, very subjective. Uh, I might just choose that one. I don't want to waste a lot of time, but again, um, puts a really cool border around that. And then I just come down to the lower right-hand corner over here and I just click on apply. And that should push that back into Photoshop. And there we go. So there's the piece. And um, let's take a look at before, after, before, and after. And this is, again, something that um, I like to do. Uh, I'm going to do a session pretty soon on how you can improve your photography by printing. And unbelievable how much you would learn by printing your images. And then some guidelines on selecting images that is worthy of printing. And not only printing, but I'm talking about printing large. Uh, right now, I'm working on a project that's going to be a 30 by 40 inch print. Uh, I'll share that with you when I talk about how printing can uh, actually improve your photography uh, down the road. But if you could do me a favor, and that is if you're new to my channel, uh, please uh, subscribe, like what you just saw here, because that helps the algorithm out there in YouTube. And uh, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified next time I upload a video. Also, if you have any questions, uh, my email is uh, here right at the bottom of the screen. It should be stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Again, stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to challenge you, and that is uh, photograph a still life, whatever it could be. Um, I saw somebody that did something really cool, and they did a series of old um, uh, tools, like a old rusty uh, pliers, uh, a old hammer, uh, an old crescent wrench, whatever it is. And they just did a series of one-by-ones like this as fine art pieces, and they did it in black and white. And it would make a really cool uh, series. But again, think creatively out of the box and work on a project and use textures and play with different textures and try some of the techniques I just shared with you. I have no affiliation with Borf, Borf Effects Optics. I will put a link in the show notes below and uh, you could go and download a trial version of their software and play with it to see if you like it. Uh, before you invest into that plugin. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to end this the same way I always do, and that is let's get that camera out. Let's do some still life shots so we can create a little fine art piece here and uh, literally creatively think out of the box. So with that out of the way, see ya!